the elite are monopoly men. They seek to create monopolies and dominate populations through the barrel of a gun. In their writings, the leadership of the New World Order has continuously heaped praise on the corrupt communist Chinese model. In August of 1973, in an article written by David Rockefeller for the New York Times, Rockefeller openly lauds and endorses Mao Zedong's actions while celebrating their command and control system. Whatever the price of the Chinese Revolution, it has obviously succeeded not only in producing more efficient and dedicated administration, but also in fostering high morale and community of purpose. The social experiment in China under Chairman Mao's leadership is one of the most important and successful in history. David Rockefeller, New York Times, August 10, 1973. Communist China is the model, planned society for the New World Order. China has received more United Nations awards for its policies and form of governance than any other nation. In the eyes of globalist planners, authoritarian China is the future. China adopted the dreaded one-child policy due to lobbying from a consortium of eugenics organizations, which includes Planned Parenthood and the United Nations. Couples that have more than one child face heavy fines and imprisonment. The practice of forced abortion in China, coupled with the cultural desire to have a male child, has plunged China into a deepening crisis where there are 30 million more men than women. The Chinese police state ruthlessly crushes all forms of dissent. Underground churches, Falun Gong practitioners, Striking factory workers are all sent to forced labor camps. Their blood and tissue types are cataloged in preparation for organ harvesting. The Chinese government then sells the prisoners' organs to the highest bidder on the world market. If a wealthy patient chooses to fly into China, the prisoner is killed and the organs are implanted. If the organs are being flown out of the country, a mobile execution van extracts the organs on the way to the waiting aircraft. The social engineers of China aggressively euthanize the elderly and disabled. China is merely following the globalist blueprint for the world. The same system of total dehumanization is quietly being phased in worldwide. Depopulation should be the highest priority of foreign policy towards the third world. Henry Kissinger, 1974. Uh, there's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. Now, None of this may succeed this time, but this to me is sort of the outline by which someday in the next few years a solution will emerge. Where does this mindset come from? Why do the elites kill the largest masses of people when no one is resisting them, when they've already attained total control? What ideology drives the elite psychopath? Since Plato's time 2,400 years ago, state planners have openly proclaimed their desire to control every detail of the commoner's life. From breeding programs to mass extermination of undesirables, the dark dream has continued on for millennia. The scientific rationale for tyranny has always been attractive to elites because it creates a convenient excuse for treating their fellow man as lower than animals. Robert Thomas Malthus, famous for saying that a mass food collapse would be helpful because it would wipe out the poor. His fictional scenario would later be called a Malthusian catastrophe. Malthus is important because his ideas led to the rise of a new scientific field that would dominate the course of human history 
for the next 200 plus years. Charles Darwin, an admirer of the Malthusian catastrophe model, developed the theory of evolution, its chief tenet being the survival of the fittest. With the help of T.H. Huxley, known as Darwin's bulldog for his strong support of Darwin's theories, Darwin's theories were pushed into wide acceptance among key scientific circles throughout England and then the world. Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton, credited as the father of eugenics, saw an opportunity to advance mankind by taking the reins of Darwin's evolution theory and applied social principles to develop social Darwinism. The families, Darwin, Galton, Huxley, and Wedgwood were so obsessed with their new social design theory that they pledged their families would only breed with each other. They falsely predicted that within only a few generations, they would produce supermen. The emerging pseudoscience was only codifying the practice of inbreeding, already popular within elites for millennia. The four families experiment was a disaster within only two generations of inbreeding. Close to 90% of their offspring either died at birth or were seriously mentally or physically handicapped. The moneyed class of the planet, and particularly the royal families of the world, who were already obsessed with breeding and filled with a predatory disdain for the underclass, seized on the new science and began aggressively enforcing its aims worldwide. Biometrics appears to be a new science, but it was actually developed by Galton back in the 1870s as a way to track racial traits and genetic histories, and as a way to decide who would be licensed to breed. In 1904, the Cold Springs Harbor Research Facility was started in the United States by eugenicist Charles Davenport with the funding of prominent robber barons Carnegie, Rockefeller, and Harriman. In 1907, the first sterilization laws were passed in the United States. Citizens with mild deformities or low test scores on their report cards were arrested and forcibly sterilized. You're 17, aren't you, Alice? Yes, but what have you done to my folks? Well, we're trying to help them, Alice, and you too. They were taken to the hospital this afternoon. Hospital? Wasn't well, none of them sick this morning. We thought it necessary to present your family's case to the State Medical Commission. Not in an examination, they decided there was but one important action to take. To have your entire family sterilized. Why, what's that? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, in this state, we have a law which provides for such people to have an operation so there won't be any more children. I see. Now, we place your brothers in institutions where they'll be properly cared for. But you can go back to your job soon. I'll arrange to have it held open for you. But... I'm kicking my job. I'm not going anywhere. Now, you're going to the hospital, too, Alice. And you mean they're going to stop me from having children ever? Exactly. I'm all right, I tell you. I won't go to any hospital. We don't want any trouble with you, young woman. If you refuse to go, the officer here will take you by force. In 1910, the U.S. Eugenics Record Office was set up. By then, the British had created the first network of social workers expressly to serve as spies and enforcers of the eugenics race cult that was rapidly taking control of Western society. The social workers would decide who would have their children taken away, who would be sterilized, and in some cases, who would be quietly murdered. In 1911, the Rockefeller family exports eugenics to Germany by bankrolling the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, which later would form a central pillar in the Third Reich. At the 1912 International Eugenics Conference in London, eugenics becomes an international craze and gains superstar status. The futurist and best-selling sci-fi author H.G. Wells had studied biology under top eugenicist and was spreading the new faith worldwide.